Okay, let's talk about Canada, a country known for its politeness, maple syrup, vast snow-covered landscapes, and lately with Donald Trump suggesting it to become the 51st state and imposing tariffs on Canada for some reason. But there's something else about Canada, something that in the world of fighter jets makes it unique. Because this, the CF-18 Hornet, isn't just any jet. It's a fighter that wasn't supposed to exist and also refuses to retire. It was supposed to be retired in the early 2000s, but somehow it's still flying. In Arctic blizzards, across NATO missions, intercepting Russian borders at the edge of North America. A fighter tailored for one of the harshest countries on Earth. It was specifically modified for Canada, built to survive minus 40 degree temperatures, land on icy runways and keep flying in conditions that would ground most aircraft. And it almost didn't happen. Because before Canada ever picked the FA-18, there was a real chance it would buy the F-14 Tomcat. That's right, the legendary American carrier fighter almost became Canada's frontline jet. And the reason it almost did and didn't was Iran. And the CF-18 became one of the longest-serving, most resilient fighter jets in the world. So why did Canada choose the CF-18? How did they modify it to survive one of the harshest environments on Earth? And why, after decades of service, is it still flying today? Let's find out. OK, let's rewind to 1977. Canada had a problem. Its Air Force was flying three different fighter jets – the CF-104 Starfighter, CF-101 Voodoo and CF-116 Freedom Fighter – all ageing, all needing a replacement. And in a country as huge and unforgiving as Canada, finding the right jet wasn't going to be easy. Because here's the thing, Canada isn't just big, it's cold. Flying in the Arctic isn't easy. Sub-zero temperatures, ice-covered runways and near-total darkness – it's a nightmare for pilots. I mean, I've flown an FA-18 in Alaska at night in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and even there I could barely see anything. Now imagine doing it for real in an actual fighter jet in a snowstorm. Yeah, not exactly fun. A new fighter needed long range, durability and the ability to operate in extreme weather. So Canada started looking. And the options? They were wild. The F-14 Tomcat, the F-15 Eagle, the Panavia Tornado, the Mirage F-1, the F-16 Fighting Falcon and a denavalized version of the F-A-18 Hornet, proposed by Northrop. They were spoiled for choice, but here's where it gets interesting. At one point, Canada was this close to buying the F-14 Tomcat and it had everything to do with Iran. See, back in the 1970s, the United States sold F-14s to Iran. But then, the Iranian Revolution happened. The US immediately cut off military support to Iran and suddenly there were brand new F-14s with nowhere to go. Canada saw an opportunity, a potential discount deal on one of the most advanced fighters of the era. Negotiations actually started. But then, a little thing called the Canadian Caper happened, the secret mission where Canadian diplomats helped smuggle American hostages out of Iran. When that came to light, relations got tense and the F-14 deal quietly fell apart. Budget being an important factor and not willing to go with the Northrop variant because it was not in full-scale production, they chose the proven and less expensive naval F-18 Hornet. The F-18 Hornet was designed for aircraft carriers and Canada doesn't have any, but it was cheaper than the other options, and even though it was a naval jet, the aircraft offered built-in ruggedness for landing on short, rough airstrips tough landing gear designed for hard impacts, and two engines for extra reliability over Canada's vast empty wilderness. And that was the deciding factor. Canada didn't denavalize the Hornet, instead it customized it for its own needs, creating the CF-18, a fighter built for one of the most extreme environments on Earth. And despite being scheduled for retirement in the early 2000s, it's still flying today. All right, let's talk about what makes the CF-18 special. At first glance, it looks just like the FA-18 Hornet. Same airframe, same general design. But look a little closer and you'll notice something unique. It's paint. The standard CF-18 comes in a two-tone low-visibility grey camouflage with RCAF markings, including a maple leaf roundel. But the closest and probably strangest detail? A fake cockpit. Yeah, you heard that right. On the underside of the fuselage, there's a black silhouette of a canopy painted on purpose. The idea is simple. In a dogfight, this could momentarily trick an enemy into thinking the jet is facing a different direction. How effective is it in real combat? Hard to say, but it's definitely a creative attempt at deception. 
Now, Canada isn't exactly known for its tropical climate, so the CF-18 is built to handle extreme cold. That means special engine and airframe modifications for freezing temperatures. And it's not just the jet. Canadian pilots have different gear too. Their ejection seats? Both the FA-18 and CF-18 Hornet have the same Martin Baker ejection seat, but the Canadian one is upgraded with hydraulic and pyrotechnic components that still work in sub-zero conditions. Even their flight suits? Thicker, which means the seats had to be adjusted to fit them. Even the survival kits are swapped out. Unlike the US Navy version, which assumes pilots will eject over warm waters and get picked up quickly, the CF-18 survival kits are designed for land survival, sometimes for extended periods in freezing conditions. But one of the CF-18's most practical features? Its tail hook. Now, Canada doesn't have aircraft carriers, but they still use it. Why? Emergency landings. In rough conditions, think icy runways or strong crosswinds, the CF-18 can catch an arresting cable on the runway, just like a carrier jet would. In fact, bases like Cold Lake have these systems installed specifically for winter conditions. And of course, there's the tech. The CF-18's avionics are customized for Canada's needs, especially Arctic patrols and NORAD defense missions. It's fully compatible with Canadian data links and communication systems. When it comes to firepower, it can carry all standard NATO munitions, plus some Canadian-specific ones. Now, here's the crazy part. This jet was supposed to be retired in the early 2000s, but the upgrades just keep coming. New radar, updated computers, advanced targeting pods, enhanced countermeasures – it's constantly being modernized, and for good reason. Canada's vast airspace demands a capable fighter, and for now, the CF-18 is still up to the job. It'll keep flying until the F-35 finally arrives. The CF-18 Hornet wasn't just built to protect Canada's airspace. It was designed to survive the impossible – blizzards, ice-covered runways, minus 40 degrees Celsius temperatures. But when the world needed it, the CF-18 didn't just defend Canada, it went to war. In 1991, Canada sent its CF-18s into combat for the first time. The mission? The Gulf War. Canadian Hornets flew sweep and escort missions, took part in ground attack strikes, and for the first time in decades, Canadian fighter jets were in the thick of battle. But the Gulf War wasn't the last time the CF-18 saw action. When NATO intervened in the Yugoslav Wars, Canada deployed 18 CF-18s. Sounds like a small number, right? But here's the crazy part. Those 18 jets flew 10% of all NATO strike missions. That's one-tenth of NATO's firepower coming from a country that contributed a fraction of the overall forces. The CF-18 wasn't just proving itself, it was punching way above its weight. And remember when Donald Trump suggested Canada should become the 51st state? Well, Canada has already defended the US without even being asked. At one point, the entire US Air Force F-15 fleet was grounded due to structural maintenance. That left a huge gap in air defense. So what happened? the Canadian CF-18s were deployed to Alaska to protect American airspace. Think about that. The United States, the world's largest military power, relied on Canadian fighter jets to guard its skies. That's what you call a good neighbor. The CF-18 was supposed to be retired in the early 2000s. Instead, it's still flying today, still intercepting Russian bombers, still training for modern warfare, and still proving that even after decades in service, it's not done yet. So, what does all of this tell us? The CF-18 Hornet was never meant to last this long. It was supposed to be a short-term solution, a fighter picked for its affordability and adaptability. Instead, it became one of the toughest, most versatile jets in the world. It wasn't just about firepower, it was about survival. The CF-18 was built for a country where winters can freeze steel, where pilots might have to eject into minus 40 degrees Celsius blizzards, and where an emergency landing means catching an arresting cable on an icy runway, not a carrier deck. And yet this jet didn't just defend Canada, it defended North America. It fought in wars, it flew missions that changed history, it stepped up when the world's biggest military needed backup. And now, even as the F-35 prepares to take its place, the CF-18 is still here still flying, still doing what it does best. Because Canada needed a fighter that could handle the impossible, and somehow they got one that refuses to quit. Until next time, fly high and stay curious.